I'm your headphones. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm just. It's all. Uh, Ignore the dog it's hair. To be, it's all be low, part of it. low key, and we'll just have a, basically a backyard conversation. Sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah. And we we wear the headphones just so you can see how you sound, because then if you can't hear yourself or something, then you know, like you need to get closer or whatever. Okay, and tell me if I sound bad or something. Oh no, uh, you, yeah, you're you're good. You know, been you've been awesome your speech uh the english speech the other night was excellent too oh thanks and that was news to me and i i had kind of i had kind of heard the uh the new hire yeah Phil sounds down like here. yeah he's yeah he's gonna, I mean, sounds like a, let's go ahead and keep that on the left side uh, yeah yeah that's on your left it comes okay, out of the go. top oh, so I'm like this. yeah okay, yeah you look good in there chase you look great <laughs> <laughs> cool okay And uh, we'll go ahead and just put that microphone right there, and we won't take too much of your time, Chase. I really appreciate you coming out and hanging out at the RV here. And, and uh, I just finished, uh, uh, you know, the tournament on Okeechobee. I finished 50 second, so wow. <laughs> I missed the I cut. Know. I missed the cut by a couple ounces. And um, but no, I appreciate you. I know your time is really valuable down here in, in Florida. And uh, we've wanted to get you on for for several months now. You were actually uh, supposed to be our first podcast. Yeah, that we yeah. wanted to launch. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, lacrosse. Yeah, and then he canceled. Yeah. All right, you got to be super close to. Oh sure, L just let me know. <laughs> there it Perfect. I'm so glad to be here. This is this is great. It's I great appreciate to see y'all. I'm sorry yeah. it didn't work out the first time, but uh, uh, no, it's all it good. No, thank you very much. You know. it, it, everything's everything's awesome, and uh, and you know we're here at the first tournament, Lake Okeechobee, and and. Uh, it's good to see everyone back and, yeah, and uh, back in full swing. You know, your whole staff, everyone's here and firing all cylinders right off, right off the, the get go. So that's uh, that's great. And I and I understand you just you just hired a CEO of Bass. No, EVP. EVP. Of okay, business development gotcha. And sales. Yeah. Okay, so are you the CEO and I'm the president? CEO. Yep, president uh -huh. CEO of Bass. Yeah. Yep, that is awesome. Yeah, so Excellent. we're thrilled to have Philip on on the okay on the team. But this is cool, isn't it? This Battleborn uh, RV is something else, Chris. I got to tell you, I, I, I don't know. One, I don't know how you drive it. Yeah, but it's the coolest looking thing on the road. It's got. I had to get a special license. <laughs> she yeah. made me get a well, special license. I asked Trey out there who yeah. drives it, thinking you've got a professional driver. Mm -hmm. so, well, Chris drives it. Chase, <laughs> how does he do that? Chase, on the, the <laughs> on the way in here, I, I mean, this is a kind of a smaller RV park. And by the way, finding an RV park with accommodations this time of year in Florida mm -hmm. is very hard. Yeah, it is but packed was, down here. I was hitting all the power lines in this whole <laughs> rv park i was like honking at him like yeah. slow down i was it dragging was the whole thing I almost took down took out the power of this uh, whole rv park here so but you do a lot of traveling obviously because uh, of what you do and, and who yeah. you are at bass and everything do you still have family in D the dallas fort worth area sister there sister yes okay. my dad spends most of his time there also. oh very cool yeah, so. yeah excellent um and i've lived there five years five years you, know, and you guys are um majority owners of bass too right like that's you're, right you're we ceo are. correct but also um owner when did yeah. uh you take over majority 2017 2017 yeah fall of 2017 yeah our, our family from a 105 year old family business wow. that's done a number of different things over mm -hmm. the years and we uh, we knew the previous uh, don logan who was mm -hmm. the previous majority owner of of, of bass mm -hmm. and then we uh had bought a minority in, uh stake investment in 2014. Mm -hmm. oh yeah and then when we bought the majority of the business in 2017, I moved. I was actually living in Dallas at the time, uh -huh. my wife and baby daughter. And then we moved to Birmingham in, in 2017. So in Alabama are my roots, so it was great to get back. And, yeah, uh, cool. But I've been working full-time with the Bass team since uh, well over five years now. No kidding, yeah. yeah. See, and, and and just because you're the president, you know, it's – you don't you don't sit back and have you know the tournament department do their thing and media do their thing you what is a a day uh at bass headquarters for chase anderson i mean what the, the typical sure. day well it's a good question but first our family has always been operationally minded investors so mm -hmm. not very passive and, and not uh, a traditional just um professional investor that really sits back mm -hmm. always get hands on understand try to learn the business understand the business so you know i'm I'm at the office every day and I'm um, working with the team mm -hmm. and really spent several years just trying to understand the business and, and, and the industry and the industry, sport, sure. right? I mean, there's, yep. a, there's a, there's a lot to what we do. A lot of facets and, uh, to this. Yeah. And I, spending time with people like y'all, you know, I've learned so much mm -hmm. and tried to learn the perspective from the anglers, obviously the fans, we make such an emphasis on the fans and the audience and trying to, 
you know, be leaders in the sport and the industry. But you know, I'm, I'm there with the team uh, every day, and uh, we've got our management meetings. And I, have, but as a CEO, you know, I I, um, I, I try to stay strategic, but mm -hmm. I, and I'm but I'm obviously um, when day to day issues come up that need some direction or counsel, I'm there sure. to support the team and. Sure. And we've got a great team, and we're uh, excited where we are. That's awesome. As an organization. Very cool. Um, whenever you first, like, became majority owner, did you have a lot of relationships with the English? Like, were you close, like, with any of the the guys? No. No. Uh -uh. No. Now, what, I, what I'll tell you is I'm a fan also. Mm -hmm. Right. So I love coming to the Elite Series events because I love the atmosphere, mm -hmm. like what you talked about. And being I love to be behind the stage in a way in line talking to the English, seeing the families of the English that are there and all of our volunteers and the people that support us in making us be able to run these these tournaments, these events. But I, I love the atmosphere at the Elite Series tournaments. It's great to be down here at our first uh, event down here in Okeechobee. So. Chase, you know what I really like about you? And, and you and I have kind of got to know each other pretty well, you know, with the, the split when it happened. And I got to know you, not personally, but um, I could – I could honestly say um, you are one of the most genuine guys. So when you say I really love being behind the weigh-in stage, getting splashed by the fish at the bump tanks, when you say you really love that being around, I believe you 100%. You're not a salesman. Like you are not a sales guy that is always, you know, trying to, you know, string a guy along or whatever it is because there's a well, there's some of that in the industry. But I could I could honestly say you are a genuine man and you stick to your word. And there's several instances, some that, you know, I won't get into, but several instances prove that to me and my family and trait, you know, when, when, you know, for the last four years or so. So, yeah, when you say something, I, I know you I mean it. Whenever the split happened, um, well, when it was occurring, like in real time, we didn't know you very well, but we tried to get a vibe, you know, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what I said to Chris, like, who do you want like to be your boss? Like if stuff goes south, mm -hmm. who do you want in charge of your life? And we didn't know you that well, but we had the vibe like this is a guy we can at least like mm -hmm. trust him and yep. his word well, seems to you. mean yep. something, you yep. know? Yeah. And and I think over the years, you know, we were right. Yep. Obviously. Wow. So, yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, you put yourselves in our shoes and half of the angler shoes when things were going down and 2018 2019 whatever it was it's like okay yeah who who which side do you trust Either the blue mm -hmm. side or the red side or you know yeah. and uh and and you know and i for one i'm so glad i stayed with with bass yeah. you know? we're glad you yeah did, Chris. and we're we all so work together did. and and now yeah. look i mean I, I think we're 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 thriving yeah where when that all went down were you completely caught off guard or did you have kind of a little bit of a heads up or anything i was really caught off guard mm -hmm. yeah and, and remember now i hadn't even been there a year i know yeah when when that happened and it was i guess i guess that with the first rumors of that started happening around icast perhaps mm -hmm. my second daughter was born on on june 28th of that year of that year yeah. so oh, you yeah, know we yeah, were adjusting newborn. to birmingham and yeah. i was learning the business and really trying to be in learning mode mm -hmm. and uh you know again that's your question i didn't i didn't know any anglers yeah, yeah. i knew him as a fan right and i you know i joined bass as a kid yeah it's always been a special organization and brand to me you mm -hmm. know personally and you know i enjoy it like when you know, thirty-two bag pound, uh, yeah. thirty-two <laughs> pound yeah. bag is held up yeah. today. Yeah. I ran to the front to to see it. That's yeah. awesome. You know, it, yeah. it's just I was talking to somebody and I had to come back and apologize and said I'm sorry <laughs> I left for a second. They go, no, that's okay. I said, yeah, I'm a fan also. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. I get to see uh, kind of all parts of our business and organization, but at the end of the day, I'm still a fan. And that's awesome. But it's been great getting to learn from the anglers. You know, about your about the, about the split. I didn't. We didn't. I didn't know a lot. I didn't know a lot mm -hmm. what that was going to happen and. You know, all I knew is that, you know, we're long term minded investors. Yeah. I like the space. I want to I want to right. spend a lot of my, one. my sure. career doing this yeah. in the mm -hmm. industry. And I want to learn the people. I want to understand the business and just try to do the right thing as right. best we can. We're not going to be perfect. I've yep. made that. But I, I really appreciate my family's approach to business and integrity is is always been a key Huge. thing. As I've heard my grandfather say, who's 88 years old and, and still goes to an wow. office every day in a wow. small town in North Alabama, where we're from, and you know, do what you say, the right thing, treat people with respect, right? right? And so I was learning, and 
you know, I tried to understand all, all sides of that. People yeah. were taking advantage of what they thought was a yes. business opportunity. Yes. That's right. fine. I'm not going to fault anyone yes. for taking sure. advantage of a right. business opportunity. Right. And try to focus on controlling what we can control. Right. And not get caught up on what we cannot control. Right. 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 I mean, mm-hmm. you're just going to spin your wheels if you do that. True. Mm-hmm. But if we say focus on trying to do things the right way, do what we say, treat people with respect and, right. and grow in our business and maintain the leadership role that, that we've had and always had for over 50 years. Yeah. And we're committed to that. And I think that we've really proven ourselves that we're, we're leaders. Right. Yeah. We're going to be, now I'm competitive at the same time, right? Sure. sure. Do things with respect and all that, but I'm competitive and we wanted to win and, right. and we worked hard, right. buckled down. Sure. And it's been a, it's been a, it was a, it's been a great learning experience, yeah. but sure. I've l- I learned more about the organization, the industry, the yeah. sport because of that, I would say. Sure. And, and, you know, I, I tried to get to know anglers more, mm-hmm. right. that perspective. And, um, it's been fun. What it was, really has. Uh, when the so now looking back, right? We've had what four years since it all occurred, or however long it's been. What what is your biggest um, takeaway from what the anglers' complaints seem to be then? Like looking at it now, that you're like, okay, if I would have known, you know, I would have handled that different, or you know, that it was an honest, you know, complaint. One thing, let me just cut you off. When we were having those meetings, when things were happening, you guys said you were committed to the anglers. I mean, you knew the importance of the relationship between BASS and the anglers because, you know, without y'all, we're nothing. Without us anglers, y'all are nothing, you know? And and you really took, you know, you really grabbed that concept and, and ran with right. it. And now how many of the guys that left are, are now back? You know, what? how many trade? Eight, seven, eight. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> four or five. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, pay attention. <laughs> but uh, yeah, y'all did a really, really good job at kind of, uh, you know, uh, keeping that relationship. You know, right. You yeah. said it. I mean, one can't survive with, without the mm-hmm. other, right? And it's our job to be consistent, put on the most consistent, best playing field we can for guys like you to put on your skills and talents yep. for for the fans and all to see and and. It's, it's got to be consistent, and we, we, we um, but that the win-win uh, you hear about, and, and you know, we, we've tried to find ways that are that are win-win. For it, both it's sides, a, it's yeah. a mutually beneficial type yes. of relationship, yes. right? Yes. I believe in that strongly in, in business, in any mm-hmm. type of business relationship, mm-hmm. partnership, and you know, I don't like to make too many business references when it comes to the sport, but but sometimes things like the mutually beneficial and the win-win environment. We tried to apply that to our relationship yep. with the anglers, and I, I think it. I think it's. And one thing you do too, like that, I really, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy hearing you speak when you're talking to the anglers. You always reference, okay, you look at an angler in the eye, or him, or him, or him, and you say, you know, it's going to be great for us, but it's going to be great for your business too. I mean, because, and some guys still don't get right. this concept: is you're a professional angler, being a professional angler means you run your own business you know right. ju- you know just ask your uh you know ask your tax lady you know it's it's you run a business and you guys are just partners of that right and what i've learned is that the business of being a professional angler is not easy mm-hmm. it's not an easy business <laughs> yeah. and it it's a very unique it is. lifestyle that's driven by that dream yep. and the passion you have for what you do and I personally been fascinated by it, and I'm very thankful for it. Yeah. Obviously, um, but it's I think a lot of people don't realize what, what all's behind the lifestyle of of a professional angler. And it, it's hard to understand unless you're like right yeah. there around mm-hmm. it, like in it. Right. Even if an uh, angler talks about it, I don't think people actually like know how to process what an angler's saying. Like you right. have to be around it. Yeah, and it's a great thing about our team is so many of our team members have have worked, you know with with you guys for so long mm-hmm. um, yeah and and you know, they've made an attempt to understand the angler perspective a lot of them are anglers themselves obviously at the same time and uh, i think uh but we what we do is is try to allow you guys to put on your skills and talents and thrive and, and show the world showcase to the world our sport that's how and it, your abilities and talents and, in my opinion i mean that's how it should be you guys should just be a, a the platform you guys are the number one platform for you know a young angler like you know whoever the the newest rookies are i mean you just provide that platform the best platform for him to grow his business right i mean we're all 
basically the independent mm -hmm. contractors and, and uh, working under your umbrella. Um, I, I still want to go back to my questions. What's that? Sure. Uh, the, when the split happened, like looking back, like what do you think, like what complaint do you think was valid back then? Is there one that stuck out to you, you know, that you were like, I wish I, I would have known? I think trade, I, I think I realized that just, just communication right. in general could be better. And um, there was, what I heard is that there were promises made that weren't lived up to and stuff. And this, this predates me, and I don't mm -hmm. want to talk too much about sure. what sure. I don't know as fact because I heard, I heard different things from different people. But right. I, I, I feel like you know, communication, which is a pretty basic fundamental thing of any relationship, obviously business, but any relationship, um, that, that that was really missing. There was just misunderstanding. Yeah. You know, people felt, I think the anglers had thought Bass was some things, doing some things it wasn't, and sure. just vice versa. There wasn't a lot of transparency and communication that could help build that collaborative, more mutually beneficial relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, again, a lot of the, I think what you're referring to probably predates me a little bit. There's yeah. people's Pre names that were mentioned and Sure. I, I really don't want to yeah, no. get into all that type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Chris. Yep. You know, anglers yep. that no longer fish the elite series yeah. or yep. previous ownership and yep. stuff that I just I don't. You, know, you had I no heard about, Didn't and, have any experience yeah. and, and no firsthand. I wasn't right. involved in that. Yep. But you know, at a very basic level, I, I saw communication could be yep. better, and we've we've worked to do that. We've used some different means, and and we talked about this week with the new email yep. um, channel and. A, you know, team approach to the angle relations and making angle relations uh, more of a priority. Yeah. Sure. Now there's we a, instilled that, uh, you know, in that going into that 2019 season, and we we keep working on that. So that was a heck of a season, 2019. Yeah, it yeah, was. Something, wasn't it? it was. The whole industry was was watching every single move you were making, we were making, and and uh, and the fans have spoke. And spoke, you know, the fans spoke, and and it, it just felt so good. And I remember sending you screenshots of this that or the other of, of you know the fan feedback right and the whole uh you know big bass big stage big dream slogan how, how has fan um like turnout and feedback been in the last four years is there a trend there like i think it there's it's been momentum building and it's really? been po in a positive way just look at the classic think, yeah. sure yeah. yeah when we've seen we've seen growth in our engage you know our, our numbers from whether it's dot com or sure. or our, our fs1 partnership uh, attendance at events and, and the classic obviously mm -hmm. breaking records uh you know twice in the last four years i guess and looking forward to another big one this year in, in knoxville that fs1 uh partnership is not easy to to land and maintain because otherwise everyone would have one right i mean That's every right. league every league every pro-am circuit why, would have an fs why spot. do you think it took so long for bass to get that sort of that true like live spot on TV or bass fishing in general. Yeah. Well, yeah. bass fishing, but yeah. bass, I think it's, they're simultaneous. It's, it's a great, great question. And if you, if you recall, uh, the first time we had live, um, coverage on a major network was in 2020 during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first event was Eufaula, Alabama in April That's of right. 2020. Yeah. ESPN provided that opportunity mm -hmm. to start with. And then, We'd had a longstanding partnership there, obviously, but we um, we we went out and met with some other media partners, uh, potential media partners, and had great discussions with FS1 and Fox Sports, and they were thrilled about the opportunity of putting live on. Do yeah. not really know why. I think they've. I don't know why it wasn't done in the past, but it's yeah. been a great partnership mm -hmm. with FS1 and with Fox Sports, and they continue to provide us more coverage, more hours of programming, and. Um, I want to apologize to you because I've got you lit up green right now. I put. The, I saw that. I put, <laughs> like, I put the lights. I glanced in up at the TV. I said, <laughs> I'm, "I'm green." No, you look great. I, hey, that is. My, you can ask my daughters. That is my favorite color. Okay, that's good. awesome. I Very the, cool. If you're gonna put a good background. You look good. I put the no. lights in a new spot, and I didn't. I don't have anyone with me when I do this, and so you're just. I keep looking at it like, man, I lit him up green. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. That is, 
I I like mean, look at me. Look, I mean, look at my look yeah. at the tan I got this week. I wasn't ready yeah. for the look at that. I was flipping all day with the long sleeve. Look at the arms and hands on me. That's funny. Yeah. It was, it's nice to come down to some nice weather down here. <laughs> yeah, Florida. it really it is. is. Nice, yeah. It's got to be cold still back home in Birmingham. Yeah, right? it is. We yep. uh, had a little cold front come through, I think. Yep. So Are you going to the next event as well or no? It's I'm not going to be yep. at Seminole. Yep. Actually, you gotta have get to back. go out to uh, Texas for a meeting next week at our yep. family company and some merchandisers. But yep. be at the Classic, of course. Yep. And uh, so Anderson merchandising and then merchandisers. Anderson, mm-hmm. merchandisers and then is there an Anderson Media as well? Yeah, Anderson Media is is the, is the corporate name. Uh-huh. It's really just a kind of parent holding company name. There's not a consumer facing. It's not really a brand. Anderson Merchandisers is it's our a company, is, right? That's the operating company that has the people. We're a sales and marketing company. We represent brands inside of retail stores. Mm-hmm. And about six, five to 6,000 people work for Anderson Merchandisers. Wow. And their cool. corporate office is there in, in Plano, Texas. In Plano. Yeah, very cool. It's a good place to be yeah. for business. Yeah, and I lived there, I lived there five years. It's great. Oh, in five years, there. yeah. You see a lot of, so I've, uh, I used to work in the Silicon Valley. You know, I worked for a tech company. And you start to see a lot, like especially over the last five, ten years, a lot of those tech companies migrating out to Texas, and um, Texas is booming. Oh yeah, it it's really booming is. a little too much though. Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> housing prices they are say, just going. Oh, yeah, they that's, are. that's the it's, negative to it. Yeah. yeah. They say, you know, don't California my Texas, you know, like because all the California transplants, I'm, I'm myself included. You were in early stage of that, weren't you? Yes. It's been yeah, several years. Ve- yeah, what did you very make, earlier. To oh Texas? man. Yeah. Thirteen. I mean, you're local, man. You're, uh, yeah. You're yeah. almost native Texan now. Yeah. Yeah. So you She's can got me you can make boots. fun of the Californians Yo, over yeah. now, can you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. My parents sold their house to Californians. Like yeah. everybody's mm-hmm. a Californian now. We got Californians in our neighborhood now. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. Yep. She throws a cowboy hat on me. The cow. You know the 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 cowboy boots and all that. And I, you got those th- that real nice pair of uh, Bass boots. Yeah, I had like some, uh, the viewers need made. to Google. Yeah, Google it. Chase Anderson boots. I think uh, James Overstreet did a whole like gallery. Was oh, it on only? It. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, there's like a really uh, sweet uh, Bass logo, logo on the true. front. Yeah, on the front. Uh, I don't know what you call it, cuff or sure. something. Yeah, made custom little shop in El Paso, Texas. In El Paso, so, uh, yeah. very cool. Yeah. That's a good place. That's is it in El Paso where Lucchese's are made. Luc- yeah. I think, I think so. so. I, think, I love Lucchese too. Yes. I've got. I actually have a couple, couple of pair of Luc- I'm a big boot guy. Yeah. So, uh, what's your favorite uh, favorite material? Exotic material. Oh, ostrich. Ostrich. All the way. Really. I've You're got like a, Larry. Her, her, my father in law is like that. Yeah. Well, I got a pair. My dad gave me my first pair of cowboy boots when I was in high school. It was probably 1997, maybe six or seven, and they're they're my favorite pair. Uh, and it, it, they're like wearing house shoes. Everybody yeah. said, "Keep wearing those." That broken like in, it. huh? Yeah. So oh, it's yeah. a leather leather sole with ostrich leather uh, right. ostrich skin yeah. boots. Yeah, very. Cool. And my my wife likes them, but they're not her. She likes boots, and I'm kind of a boot guy. I've got several pair of boots, <laughs> and they're not her favorite pair. But I always gravitate to those boots. That's awesome. And they'll be out at the classic, and then I'll have my, of course, have the, the with the shield, the bass shield on those my bass boots as as they're called. I guess. That's so. funny. But I'm a boot guy. <laughs> Knoxville Classic. The last time we were there was in 2019. I I had a good tournament, but the 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 turnout there was unbelievable. Just yeah, I, I guess just the way uh, the the dynamics of of you know where the weigh-in stage is versus where the takeoff is. I mean, everything was just right there. Yeah. It seems like it's just it was a lot easier to navigate around for an angler. Absolutely. Uh, you yeah. know, Knoxville's awesome hosts and and that that should be a good one it's it's an incredible setup and it's it's kind of a one of a kind you know what people don't realize is you oftentimes hear why is the classic not here why is it not here it there's a number of different um i kind of say ingredients but there's several key factors that go into selecting the the classic Mm -hmm. you know we need the facilities for the weigh-in the arena we need the expo um, convention space for the largest consumer fishing show, mm-hmm. the expo, and then we need a good lake. To, we need a lake to fish on. Yeah, it's right? hard to have all three. And, of those. Oh, and oftentimes, yes. the cities that have the facilities for the the fan experience and, and for the classic don't have a lake, no don't have a lake right there. Yeah. Or if there's a great lake, lake, they may not have the square footage we need right. for the expo. Well, Knoxville. What's so unique about Knoxville? And I actually grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, you did? So yeah, yeah I went right. to high school that's there, right. yeah. West High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. And 
the um, everything is right there downtown. The proximity from where we put the boats in, where takeoff is, is at Calhoun's, the convention center in the arena at Thompson Bowling on, on, on University of Tennessee's campus. And those are all places I knew as a, as a kid. So it's yep. kind of cool going back to Knoxville. But it makes a great fan experience. So yes, if you have the opportunity to go uh, this March 24th through 26th here yep. next month, welcome you out to the Bassmaster Classic in Knoxville, Tennessee. You guys look, and if you're out of range, I mean, look up plane tickets. I mean, uh, there's still plenty of accommodations, I'm sure, around. and um, Maybe. But, yeah. I think it's pretty sold well, yeah. out. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's the downtown hotel room is probably hard to come by, but there'll, there'll sure. be some out, the out of town a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, we you know we we broke the attendance record last last time we were there, which mm-hmm. that record was broken in Greenville, South Carolina last year with 153,000 people. That's a lot of people. So Knoxville is a great local host. Uh, Sports Commission Chad Culver there they're uh, so supportive and visit Knoxville. They're promoting it and want to break break Greenville's record. So we're hopeful we'll break <laughs> yeah. the attendance record. That's but if cool. you're if you're in the area, please come out to Bassmaster awesome. Classic. It's great for the whole family, man. Absolutely. I still have some hard questions. <laughs> you're throwing these, you're lofting softballs over there, and killing me. No, uh, hey Chris, why don't we <laughs> yeah. kick, 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 no, kick me Chase, off? You're, awesome. <laughs> um, no, you're, you're uh, killing it, Chase. That's awesome. Um, no, I'm not good. Y'all yeah. know I'm not very good at this stuff. I know. But when that's... you when you asked me to come on, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going. I'm not yeah, say we're, no to this. yeah, we're yeah. Trade says. Yeah. Trade says. <laughs> Chase, I know you don't do very many interviews. It's like, do people ask a lot? Not really. Not a ton. Yeah, they're probably like, afraid to ask. This day and age, I mean, I don't. I'm actually not that scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, I like just, to fish and hunt and just like yep, what y'all do, everybody. Yep. You know? That's very the thing. Like, man. I feel like most people don't know you, and mm-hmm. like that's why I was like, Chris, we have to have Chase because the Chase yeah. we know would. Like you see a lot of like comments and stuff. I'm like these people have no clue. You yeah. know they. Oh, do people make comments about me? Well, d- they. Just, <laughs> I don't even know. Don't I, don't, make, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't. They don't cares. make comments about you. No. But it's just more in general about like Bassmaster. Oh, sure. And when you've got like another organization who they're just like constantly like in sure. the spotlight saying well, stuff, and then you are the guy who likes to just just go to work, like yeah. focus on your thing. Yeah. You, yeah. Don't, you don't get into That's it. You. you know. Right. You don't talk about anything. That kind of got my head down yeah. let's yeah. You know, go do my job and yeah. I, you know i have a great love my family life and right. they're so special to me and my wife and and daughters the way and it should be yeah. like to uh you know i like to be outside myself and yeah, i love to be out in the woods out on the water and how old are got the, the girls fish this week a little bit six and four six scarlet and four. nana Catherine. oh yeah, that's awesome uh, we uh it's special stage i tell you it's really special and it's tough being gone but uh sure you know it's yeah they're uh they're getting into. We started fishing a little bit last year for the first time, and uh, I think awesome. I sent y'all some pictures yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's awesome. Cool. Some pictures last year. Great and, and I are almost there. We yeah, we've uh, yeah. We're I'm sure. getting pretty old. Man. Oh man, come on. Yeah, you're in your thirties. How old are you? Forty two. Like Forty. Yeah, yeah, you're young. I'm gonna be forty three here this wow. year. Wow. So nineteen eighty, baby. Eighty. Yeah. The 84 end for of me. the. Gen X, I believe. Yeah, is what it yeah. Is. I get yeah. confused on what's what. Honestly, they say the the cutoff is there at some point in the early eighties. Yeah. yeah. But I know in nineteen eighty, I'm not a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that, yeah, that's I don't know all that the, matters. No. <laughs> in I'm, today's I'm, I'm world. Joking. No, no. That's Those funny. millennials is a great a great generation, but I think <laughs> I think I just missed that. I think like, I'm just a bit too old for that. But yeah, I'm a millennial. The young anyway. people these days, I, coming off of COVID, I, I mean. I'm sure you've heard from all the sponsors and everything. I mean, we had like unbelievable growth in the fishing and outdoor space. Oh, huge. Way. Absolutely. Like how much of that's going to stick? Do you feel like, you know, put everyone's going, kind, well, kind of everyone's going back to work, you know, you're not, yeah. you know, do you feel like people are going to continue to grow the outdoors or, um, you know, or was that just like a, a COVID thing where everyone wanted to be outside? No, I, I'm positive on the, on yeah. the, the growth in the, in the outdoor space. Yeah. Uh, I think we saw a tremendous, to your point, tremendous growth and participation in, in 2020. And then 2021, you know, soccer practice was canceled, a lot of family activities, when people flooded to the outdoors. Yes. It was outstanding. We have seen some normalization, mm-hmm. which you're referring to, but yeah, I think the base is higher than it was in, in 2019. I think more people were exposed to the activity of, and of fishing, the sport of bass fishing. What numbers are you talking about? Like retail, like a, a bass pro shop, it, sales numbers? No, uh, I would, just I'm referring more to participation. participation. Yeah. Data like so. licensing. What the, what the ASA, the American Sports Fishing Association, puts mm-hmm. out, they put a report out on participation. License, yeah. 
and there's that that did translate chris over to to sales sure. at retail sure. um it was a tremendous boom mm -hmm. um but uh which um you know i think a lot of industries a lot of things saw this but i think as we normalize we're at we're at a higher base than we were yeah. before and we want people out fishing and, and sure. at, at bassmaster at bass that is something you know we we we, we obviously put on the bassmaster classic the bassmaster elite series but we we want people fishing we want rods in people's hands we want children sure. introduce new people to the sport and the activity and I'm really positive that that we're we're, we're going to keep seeing growth and participation in, in fishing and uh, college level, high school level. Look I at mean, the growth! Yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah, the youth level is so encouraging. Mm -hmm. You know what's really neat, and you know, trades fish the opens and participate in the opens. Oh, absolutely! And, and, yeah. and she's you know had her own line of rods, and 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 um, it it is cool to be a young female angler i mean yeah. look at like scott martin's uh, daughter uh, yeah you know she's Hillary. out there and you know selfies with bass and things like that but it's so cool seeing young females you know uh holding up icky fish you know for for the gram i mean that is that is really cool this day this day and age 100 percent agree and I, I did a quote recently for um the hello and severe scholarship we were a part of and my, my quote was part of it paraphrasing is that we are seeing higher female participation rates at the youth level there's a lot of to uh -oh. your point chris and it's it's really encouraging that's excellent at high school and of course we're, we're, we're down to junior now mm -hmm. but we are seeing more and more women and, and, and young girls come into to fishing at bassmaster events and uh, we're thrilled to see it yeah and we think there's a great future right. for women in what, our sport like behind the scenes though because that's always been my question like how do we keep girls fishing is that a conversation that goes on with you guys you know because there is a significant drop off you know when they the, leave the their dad yeah, or whatever we, you know? we we've had some conversations around that what what we decided we want to do is we would love to get the perspective of, of female anglers like yourself mm -hmm. yeah. to to better understand yeah that because um I don't have the, all the answers today sure. on that right. trait, but, uh, yeah. you know, we would love to hear from female anglers as sure. well. Right. That, that, I mean, yeah. what they think of that. We saw a women's tour. I think it ended in, I don't know, maybe the late 2000s or so. Yeah, I'm not even talking about on the tournament level, like just period. That's one thing, you know, I there's a really strong participation in high school fishing with women in, in Texas with mm -hmm. girls, mm -hmm. but there's and I'm sure y'all's numbers show it, a huge drop off once they leave high school. And there's more participating in college, but not as much as you would like. Right. It, and, and then for whatever reason, women go on and do other things in life. And, right. And, and the, the, they're great memories, right. but, but they don't really do it on their own. So mm -hmm. I didn't know if you knew some secret that I hadn't figured out yet, but apparently not. Everyone's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a woman. I'm sure I with, should know. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm sure with your help, you could come up with something uh, special. I'm out of that space. It's, it's, <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. Um, I'm going back to the English. We're not. I I did my studying on this, Salvain. <laughs> uh, I just have some questions. Just some like questions. I think everyone that would be good. That I think you are like one of the few people who like has an answer or or an idea or whatever. And one of them is um, when it comes to like the anglers, you've had four years of these guys. Like, what's one of the things that you wish that the anglers understood more from a business perspective? Like, so that y'all could be more cohesive and work together? Hmm. Interesting question. You know, I, I think sometimes that, that people think we're, 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 we're bigger than we, than we are mm -hmm. from a. a from a business standpoint, right. a dollar and cent right. standpoint, right. Sure. Um, you know, in, in com comparing us to, you know, a major sports league is is difficult, mm -hmm. right? And, and we we have a lot of the same components as as major sports league from from a bit operating standpoint, sure. But we we don't have the very sizable TV rights deals mm -hmm. that right. say a NASCAR or a PGA have. Right. And a lot of major sports leagues, that's been their main source of revenue. Right. Are the big rights deals. Yeah. So paying for the rights to be on the, the major network on, yeah. on primetime hours. Um, you know, I hesitate sometimes, Trayton and Chris, to get into the economics or, or, sure. or the financials of a business because not all anglers are business people. Right. And that's okay. Right. Yeah. That's Most all right. Aren't. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. But 
you know, what we do with the size team we have mm -hmm. for the size business we are, not just to toot our team's horn, I, horn, I find very impressive. Yeah. Because, of course, I know I know the dollars and cents of sure. our business better than anyone, and I, I know the operations. And we we put our best foot forward to put forth the best product we can, given mm -hmm. the the, situ the, the yeah. parameters that we have. Yeah. Right. You know, right. We don't have a billion dollar rights deal. Right. right? We're, yeah. we're, we're not a huge, huge company. Yeah. And I think there is a misperception amongst anglers that we're much, much yeah. bigger from right. a, a dollar and cents from a revenue and profit sure. standpoint than we are. Right. Um, I, you know, I, I will not get into details of, of our financials, sure. obviously, sure. but pro as a private company, but I, I I think it, there was a misperception in the past that we, we there was this sort of hoarding. Yeah, and, there's a bunch of money right. coming. Yeah, in. Right. and that we're 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 not Giving we're not up. being we could do more than we are. Right. And you know the team we're a very efficient organization. As I said, we we do a lot of what major sports leagues do mm -hmm. with a fraction of the size staff. Right. And a fraction of this revenue. Revenue. Um, right. Now we're growing and we've grown and and we're we're healthy we're we're stable, mm -hmm. but you making those direct comparisons to be a major team sport yeah. sports league it is is difficult. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and again, we we think we can grow. There's opportunities sure. to do more. Right. We're excited about the business and the trends and mm -hmm. the in the sport and in the industry that you, we just talked about. But um, again, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to try to get to talk to anglers too much about right. the business part. And right. you shouldn't, right? It's, 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 yep. it's just, you know, it, how do you separate, how, how do follow. you separate that though? Whenever like, you know, after the split, y'all were like, we're going to let them vote for things and all that. So how do you allow votes while also knowing like most anglers don't understand the business aspect? Yeah. All they want is free well, it's entry good, fees. It's, yeah. a good, yeah. it's a good question. I mean, I think what we what we've tried to do it gets back to the communication i was referring mm -hmm. to earlier is, is be better communicators in, in in the voting thing that we did and we've been clear we're going to make decisions that are the best for bass mm -hmm. therefore what we think and best for the elite series mm -hmm. that we therefore believe are be what's best for anglers yeah. um with the voting though we we've tried to make a better effort of, of hearing the perspective of the anglers and and, and allowing anglers to have express their opinion about certain situations right. we're yeah. obviously not doing it for everything chris sure but when there's an issue that that we get enough consensus there's enough trend yeah that it's it's a big deal to to many anglers you know we want to try to hear yeah um but again we we're charged with with making decisions that's in the best interest of, of our organization and when we do that we ultimately feel it's what's best for anglers sure because again back to your point Without the anglers, we don't have we don't have we don't have an organization. But we have to work together. Yeah, it's got to be a relationship that's mutually beneficial yeah. that creates that win win environment. And um, see, I look at it as you you guys are the platform. Um, you know, you guys you guys take care of those relationships from from you know that platform to the sponsors. You know, and and again it it's a pr it really is a privilege to be one of the 100 guys um you know on that platform on that stage and and but again th there's a big misconception of oh i'm going to bassmaster elite series angler now i i put in my time I, I i qualified for the elite series chase now take care of me from here on out no that's like that's when the work actually starts that's when you if it officially become a business and you run parallel with the platform BASS and and you guys should only be a platform you know that's all you should be and you guys do it well and and again you know when an angler qualifies for the elite series it's not like chase take care of me it's yeah. you got to work your butt off because you yourself are your own brand and right. um and i wish more people would understand that i think you know we are the platform we are the league but one thing we also are is is the media arm as well mm -hmm. with since we we own and operate you know our, our media channels from the website to uh you know in partnership with fox sports our tv and uh you know the magazine the publications but you know we we want to be a promotional vehicle at the same time to work with our anglers and and you know we talked about social media in the in the angler meeting the other day you know we've continued to see numbers grow and yeah 
anglers numbers are growing that's, that's so many fans consume content that way now yes. obviously and yes we try to have a multi-channel and multi-platform approach to how you fans and people can view and learn more about you know bass fishing and then view and see the uh, the elite series anglers yep. and you know working together on promotional opportunities yeah. from from a marketing standpoint or things we're open to right you use we're trying to expand our, our brand reach sure we want to in doing that we think we can help anglers expand their brand reach yep. right and it's it can be a yep. mutual in, you use the word infotainment a lot over the last couple of years and i think that's that's just perfect right i mean it's our job as anglers to kind of teach you know at the more at the higher level um, but also like entertain, I mean, just entertain you. Yeah. I mean, you guys invest in all the cameras and all the, uh, you know, live coverage and such, and you guys make us look like, like absolute rock stars, but, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta be informative and you gotta be entertaining and, uh, and you know, some guys excel on it better than others. And, uh, some guys aren't, but I think you guys do a great job of just being, being fair to all, you know? Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Like for Bassmaster right now, like the the biggest struggles are, or like, um, are do you feel there are some issues that y'all are facing right now? We're we're pretty focused on just executing. The season started, and our team really goes into execution mm -hmm. mode. I would say the biggest things are things we can't control, right? Sure. Like what happens for the weather the next day, right? right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it, as an outdoor sport, you know, there's yeah. stuff like that, but. When we get to the season and the, and the team goes into execution mode and, um, you know, we're, we're doing what we do, it's, it's a great time of year. We're just excited about the start of the season. But, you know, we've got to run the fairest, you know, best tournaments possible and cover them to the maximum of our ability and, and expose the world to, mm -hmm. to the sport. So I don't have major concerns right now mm -hmm. going into this year. Um, again, except things that are – out of our control sure, right yeah. so, economy uh, i mean you know yeah, right. overall economy, yeah we, exactly there's a lot we know there's a lot of uncertainty sure. uh, in sure. the economy we know what the inflation last year did yes. to consumers and people and now yeah. you know the market's up and down every day and we can't control that yeah no. and you know as, as long-term minded investors and operators you know we're going to go forward and, and control what we can and uh, i'm excited that you know, we're doing a good job with what we can control, yeah. right? And w what we can't control, we just got to let let that fall. Let so you fall keep, where it does. You keep talking about long term minded. So you're telling me you guys aren't selling bass this year because <laughs> I keep hearing that. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> know. News to me, Trey. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what forums she she's a she goes on these bass fishing. Well, that that forums rumor comes that, up every every year. Month. Does it really? Yeah. Oh, I've gotten stuff like, "Hey man, I heard you sold the company for this amount." Oh my God! It's like, well, thanks for, Wait, is that oh, someone in the industry or that, outside? Oh, funny, I thought I'd, I'd have known that. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's just Rumors, that's yeah. business, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's not just fishing. That's not right. That's not just our industry. That's not just our sport. That that's just. So why do people okay. like want to create a rumor though that y'all are selling? Does it like create some sort of advantage? That's what I don't get. I don't know. Uh, have you ever thought why like do people why? like to engage in rumors right, right. i mean yeah drama you know that you're like me he just he's like whatever like <laughs> stay in your lane stay in your lane and execute what's on the table in front of right. you right yeah you know maybe you could say that's boring maybe you could say it's old school maybe you could say god oh, chase he's just <laughs> yeah. head down business guy <laughs> uh, i don't know uh, it doesn't matter to me but I can't get too caught up in what I, what I yeah. don't, what right. I can't control. Yeah. And right. when I hear rumors, because yeah. they come up, right? Yeah. I just, I just kind of shrug them off. Yeah. Right. It's and cheap. if people want to get all excited about that stuff and run with it, yeah. I can't control that. No. Right. Y'all go That's right cheap. ahead. Yeah. It's like, but I will tell you, if, if anybody knows uh, if the business was going to be for, is for sale or was for sale, going to be for sale, I believe it would be me. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, love, I love getting that stuff because I'm just like, huh. It's funny. The first time I'm hearing that, it's an interesting way to That's hear about a, this. One thing, though, that I have respect for you is that anytime I've ever, like, brought a rumor to you, like, you just don't even, like, you don't play around with it. You don't mess with it. It's like I've got I got too much stuff to focus on. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even have time to entertain that. And as a leader, like, that 
means a lot. Like my husband's career is in your hands, and that means a lot to me. Looking at the way other people handle things, even the way I handle things, like you're just so you're professional about things, and as in the position you are, like that's all you can ask for, you know, from a leader. Yeah, well, you're well, very level-headed. Well, well thank you. I, I, I try to be. There's there's a lot of areas I. I struggle and I don't do a great job, but in that I, I do try to stay focused and, and stay level headed. And, and part of that gets a little bit to my to my personality and the way I am now. You know, I'm I'm a stroke survivor. I survived a major stroke. Actually, that happened down here in South Florida. Oh, did it really? So, I nearly lost my life. Like my uh, the doctors told my parents, they didn't think I'd recover. So now, when when I hear stuff, I mean, and I get excited at things. Don't get me wrong. I'm not this total. You know unemotional person um but after going through such a traumatic life experience and and god healing me from that and saving me um you know things like the rumor stuff just don't affect me quite as much as maybe they had a number of years ago if it had been before i had the accident um but it does get back to as a business leader you know stay focused on on your team and what you can control and um do things the right way and and run run hard you know yeah. i mean we're competitive we want to grow mm-hmm. we are growing we want to grow more yeah i want more for this business i want more for sure. this sport yeah you know we don't want to sit back and just say no. oh things are right great don't um, be complacent no cannot be complacent i do think that's a word that i heard used leading up to that 2018 split mm-hmm. right and yeah. from what i learned that 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 may have been applicable right but that's not our family's approach to business Good. that's not my approach to business stay focused keep moving forward and be better right. yeah one of our uh, company values is continuous improvement mm-hmm. it's actually one of toyota's i found out as well um and um you know how do how do we improve one way we do that is is by hearing from the anglers mm-hmm. and hearing from people that are doing great things yeah. i mean some of y'all, Chris, your your personal marketing tactics are outstanding in the ways you're engaging with your fans, and we can learn from that. We can help support you in sure. that, right? And 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 vice versa. Again, back yeah. to that that sort of mutually uh, beneficial relationship that w- that we need to have. Um, so. With um with sponsors, yeah. now that we we've, we've got through the four years, five years, whatever, Ron, I still haven't figured it out, but. Um, What have they said? Because I know, like, we were all scared. Like, no matter how, like, Mm -hmm. strong of a a front we wanted to put on, no one really knew what was going to happen. Like, what are sponsors saying now, like, that they've – because I know – I know what they've told me, you know, the changes they've seen and how happy they are. But what what are they telling you guys, like, from the way it used to be to the way things are now? I've heard it's improved. I had – one thing I did in, in, in 2018 around the time of the split is I, I called a lot of our partners and listened to them. Mm-hmm. Another one of our company values that we instilled after we acquired the business is listening and being a good listener. And you know, we, we listened to our partners and we really tried to find how can we drive value? I'm a big believer in, in adding value. If you can't add value in, in a business relationship, Why do anything? then yeah. Yeah then what are you, you know yeah. what are you doing why, why would yeah. someone do business with you if, right. if you can't yeah. add value and mm-hmm. i think we've done a good job at working to work with our partners to add value to maximize uh, the sponsorship value in working across our, our media platform and across our tournament trails and and we've seen we've seen great growth and, and good enthusiasm from the sponsor community so we're thrilled with our our awesome. sponsor relationships and our partnerships right now but and we couldn't do it without them just as it was everyone who does this for a living knows so So does does the uh, media environment that we deal with today like social media and everything being so content heavy like that does that like concern you or or is it hard to deal with you know with with the sort of business that you run it's 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 a it's essential we, yeah. you know content is yeah. it's what people right. want it's what people consume and and the ways people have consumed content has changed a lot right. in the 50 years yeah. 50 plus years that, that bass has been around um obviously but because you guys still do the magazine thing and, sure. and bass master, bass like, master and bass times. has yeah. always been like heavy editorial 
Um, but we're seeing such a shift. Like, how do you navigate, you know, those changes and stay on trend? I'm a big believer that you've, you've got to serve the audience. Yeah. You've, you, you, you've, you've got to provide the content yeah. that they find compelling and interesting. Mm-hmm. We have, um, you know, our membership loves the magazine. Yeah. yeah. Bassmaster. Yeah. We have a lot of younger fans and audience that turn to us. They engage with us via social media. Yeah. So yeah. we, you know, we have a new head of social media right now. Yeah. We're doing a lot more video and, and promotional stuff through social media. It's so important. And then our live product that JM produces out of yes. Little Rock, of course, Bassmaster Live. The we standard. think it's best in the, the standard in the oh, industry absolutely. in the store. Right. So, you know, one, you, you've got to know your, your audience and your fan. And, 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 you know, from a business and more of a retailer and consumer product, it's know your customer, yeah. right? We've got to know our fan. We've, mm-hmm. we've yeah. got to know the audience. And how can we best serve them? Right. What do they want? We did a big audience research project for our, our digital business last fall. Invested in surveys and a third-party firm came in. Oh, wow. A lot of good findings. So yeah. we're applying some of those now. Cool. But you know, we've got to evolve. Right. Yes. You've got to seek continuous improvement. Yes. Do things differently because things things are changing. The way yes. people, consumers consume content is changing. Right. Yeah. In all of us, whether it's a, it's an angler, it's it's a it's one of the brands in the industry. It's us as a league and media company. We've got to be willing to change and yeah. adjust and adapt and yeah. right and serve that that consumer and that audience in the best way Just possible. Just like the CD, you know, the CDs go into you know MP3s and 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 uh, I guess uh, a digital digital music you know yeah. no one no one listens to cds anymore it's gone yeah Dinosaur. i mean it That's went right. from cassette to cds and now everything's uh, digital it's it's, yeah. it's it's amazing that's the way people are consuming and, fishing hook right. sets and fish jumping and it's really weird too because it lives on social media you know right. and then it's gone just like that and you know we we serve a wide range of fans and audience right. and you know because we like, as i said our membership loves Bassmaster Magazine. Mm -hmm. And I love Bassmaster Magazine. I've read it since I was a kid, right? Mm -hmm. And it serves an out, it's an outstanding platform for our company, for our brand. But again, we have a lot of people that come to watch tournaments or Chris that are probably your social media followers that are not, may not be members and get Bassmaster Magazine and they're turning more to a different form of content. We want to be there too. We want to serve yes, them. Both right. sides. So we, we, we've got to do our best to take a balanced approach at, at mm-hmm. how do we serve the bass fishing community and, and the fishing community with the content that they find valuable. Is the membership aging? Is that a, like it, you were talking about. Well, our population's aging. Right? Right. Well, <laughs> I'm, yeah. kind of a dem- I'm kind of a demographic guy. So yeah, yeah. this, this yeah. could be boring for your viewers and great. listeners. No, you're doing great. Well, you were talking about how they're magazine people, you know, like is so is the demographic well, of the of your membership older? It's 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 the membership is older than our social media audience. Right. In our. Um, yeah. If, but that that's just kind that's of obvious, sense. right? Yeah, yeah. It's um, sure. it's part of it is just demographics, right? But I meet a lot of high school and college anglers that tell me they love getting Bassmaster magazine, yeah, now, right, yeah. right. And some of it gets into personal preference, right? Yeah, yeah. again, I'm, it's it's. I'm like, a book person. Like a, I want yeah. to fill the pages. I want to smell yep. the pages. Yep. I have yep. books everywhere. It's but it's like you know, Chris, you're an unbelievable angler. You're one of the top professional anglers in this sport, but at the same time, you're a business guy, it's your business, mm-hmm. and you have to be a marketer, yes. and you have to market your personal brand as well as all the companies you represent, like, That's like the name Best Pro Shops, right? Yeah. Um, and to do that, you've got to know your fans, right? Yes. You've got to know right. your yes, consumer. You and, and, and you're, you're constantly trying things, this style yeah, of this, and right. this style right. of this post and everything, right. and then you you know, you know gauge that feedback, and then you run with it. Right. And then when that starts to fizzle out, you start adapting and changing. I it really up. liked Charles Valentine's post. I was like, <laughs> yeah, oh, we're getting some that. humor. I <laughs> yeah. like this. That's yeah, the we're new trying to do some new things. Thing. Yeah, it's a new yeah, social Laura. media girl. L.A., they call it Laura yeah. A.G. We've got a couple of Lauras. So L.A. is is her name. So, but Those kinds of little there. things make you – it's, like, so cheap and, like – it's consumed quickly and forgotten about the next day, but it's got a huge impact. Those quick, you know, just quick, cheap humor, you know, that's, that's, that's great. And uh, we love that, ba- you know, we love to see bass, you know, stepping up and giving us that kind of content. Cause that's, 
That's huge right now. Yeah, keep looking for some new stuff. Yeah. And and you know, both both you, Chris and Fred are, are good enough marketers to know, you know, and you know you know the fans, you know trends. Yeah. yeah. We're all ears. We want to be good listeners yeah. and you know, if we can um, Well, I approve of the uh, social media uh, situation because I thought that was awesome. Like that's what oh, I've good. always wanted Thank from you. Bass is like just some like funny, like pop culture, just you know, yeah. really you know, show a different side to Batman. I think you'll yeah. keep seeing us do awesome. some things differently cool. on, on right. social. So I know awesome. we're we're keeping you, and we didn't, like... Hey, I'm having fun. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is, what, several months in the making. It was going to be up at Lacrosse. It's yeah. the last yeah. elite. Yeah. yeah. I'm Chris, glad it's working out here down in Florida. So I, yeah. I appreciate it. I just think um, that something when we started this podcast, I was frustrated with things I was seeing online, and just people didn't seem to, like know really what was going on anywhere not just with bass master just period and fishing and so i thought well let's do a podcast and let's have people who are actually involved in situations come on mm -hmm. and hear like directly from the source and like yeah. you know and and i just felt like there wasn't really that avenue in fishing and bass fishing there and so for me it was like we obviously have to have chase oh. on yeah well thank you but there's a lot of people and people you've already had on i know because you've had people like rick clun that have forgotten more than i know right <laughs> now right, yeah. so I, I will by no means claim to be <laughs> but an you expert were, or definitely not the um you historian. navigated you know at least for us you know i know there was a, a split with when flw came around but we were young but um you navigated a, one of the biggest uh, situations in, in the sport of bass fishing. Yeah, bass. It, 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 it rocked the, yeah. Yeah. the pro fishing world for oh, sure. Yeah. It really did. And for me, you know, it was, I got really tuned in, really focused and, and jumped in, but also I learned a tremendous amount. Yeah. You know, I spent hours talking to anglers, yeah. hours talking to sponsors and leaders in the industry, trying to learn and were you scared? You ultimately want to focus on how, how we can be better. How yeah. can we use this situation mm -hmm. to, book, to be better? Yeah. yeah. And I think what we're seeing is that that's, that's happened. It I, is. I, I feel it really is. But we're a better organization in, in a better position now in the, uh, in the beginning of 2023 than we were in the fall of 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, do, do, I do feel that do way. Do you feel like um, – a lot of people say there only needs to be one league and that's one of the issues is that sponsors get split up. Do you feel that way or do you think that multiple leagues can exist and bass will always be supreme, but, but, but it can play, you know, with other leagues? I think, you know, if you're referring to major league fishing, they've carved out, carved out a niche and they're yeah. you know, doing the thing right now. And again, I, I stay focused on what we do. Yeah. Right. Yep. And it's all you can do. Yeah. You know, we, we want to stay focused on being the leaders and, and the fans. We talked about the fan. I want to hit on this for a second. You know, we, the fans are what drives our sport. The fa and our fans, the fans of the Bassmaster Elite Series of, of, of Chris Aldane and every other elite angler are also the consumers that drive our industry. Yes. They're the ones purchasing products, yeah. and, and they're the ones that obviously those, those dollars fund our industry. Yes. And not only do they, they help the, the companies, but – tax dollar excise tax dollars go into funding a lot of people don't realize that mm -hmm. um when you buy fishing equipment some of the tax dollars on on that are, are going into to funding our, our industry and yep. going to our our fishery departments and mm -hmm. yep. the resources so you know we all move so up together i mean which is that's right we just can keep feeding each other and right keep so if if another league helps us do that right then, right you know, that, that's good that's 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 good for our our space um right. again i don't comment a lot and people probably don't they're always looking for more i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> nudge nudge on, on talking about on talking about uh i'm starting to have some fun here so. yeah i'm no, talking about uh our biggest competitor major league fishing when i said i'm competitive on a win we're out to win we're out to be better we're out to be the best the top league we are the top league but we're going to focus focused on what, we're, right. and they can yeah. carve out a niche and do their thing, and, yeah. right. and that's great. Yeah. yeah, and um, I know some of those anglers over there, and yeah. mm -hmm. some good guys over there, and you know, taking advantage of a business opportunity, and yeah. you, you can't things, fault someone for no, that. Can't right. fault yeah. it. Things could have been done differently. Sure, they could have, but but I've maintained that let's stay focused on what we yeah. can do, how yeah. we can do better. When yeah. that happened, it's how do we get together? 
how do we be better? Right. And I think five years later, we're in a better position than we were. Yeah. I and agree. I think five years from now, we'll be in a b- better position than we are now. And you know, from the angler standpoint, you, you navigated that beautifully because, in my opinion, it seemed like every day for about a week, well, it's probably longer than that. I mean, you were just you were just taking hits left and right. I mean, like on many fronts, of course, but you navigated that beautifully. And I just, it's just almost unfair that it happened when you just were new on the scene, you know, it's almost unfair to you. And, uh, um, you know, it, you were just really misunderstood. Um, you know, that's what some of the anglers have said, you know, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, um, less than a year I've been involved, right. Yeah. In, in a year in the, in the business world yeah. and in the sports and world, what, it's pretty short. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I don't most, even know everybody's name. Yeah, right? I know people, are, people ask me what it's like, what they thought about what so-and-so said is like, I don't even know I who you're know. talking about. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. what you, and again, I was um, I was not the CEO at that time. Right. And I was really more in a learning uh, role and learning the business, but our family was the majority investors um, at that time. And, you know, but I had to roll up my sleeves. And mm-hmm. one is I got to learn first before we can make decisions on how to be better. Yeah. I got to learn. And talking to people like, like y'all really helped. I mean, we, you know, I had conversations with a lot of anglers and Chris, you were um, outstanding to talk to Myself during that time. A couple other guys um, were willing to, you know, oh, yeah, we, lend some insight. Talk, yeah, a lot it's of, almost like you walked in on an ambush, but like I said, you navigated it beautifully as, as, as best as you could, you know, through through those times. And, and now look, a lot of those guys who left are right back, fishing right back with us and, and helping all of us thrive And together. it's been neat is it, it seemed very natural. Yeah. And even the way that the other competitors, like, you know, have have responded to them coming back. And, yeah. You know, we, we maintain we want guys to qualify back through. And, yeah. yeah. You know, backstage today when you see, you know, you see um, Jason Christie and Mike Iaconelli mm-hmm. back there. And, um, you know. Hackney. We're, we're Christie, just yeah. thrilled with the field we've got right yeah. now. And, awesome. um, and, yeah, I- Hackney, has talked to Greg, said hello to him. You know what else is interesting too is is that is uh, is that demand for those spots. I mean, look at the opens participation. I mean, it's just oh, unreal, guys. Unbelievable. I mean, those guys want these elite series spots, and and to me, that's a testament of what you guys have built, um, how you have brought the elite series up, and and everyone knows that that is the very top of the sport. I don't care what anyone says. Right. Everyone knows that that is the spot. If you're if you're a tournament bass angler you know you you thrive and you will you will do anything it takes to get on that 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 big stage and it's because yep. of what what you guys built and uh and it's really exciting to see you guys kind of go up and up and up and up yeah. and hopefully who knows may, hopefully someday you know no entry fees w- would be feasible but you know the only way to achieve that in my opinion is just all of us working together the, the, everything let's you talked growing. about tonight yeah that's right let, let's we keep all growing. all work together and and right. you know uh you know more more sponsorship dollars more people spending money on fishing more you know and that that's in right. turn and again a big misconception is that all oh, bass make so much money on, off of us anglers because of our entry fees no it does that's operational costs man like that's just that just keeps us on this stage, you know. And right. I wish more guys would, you know, would understand that. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, you look at the other league, you know, they tried the no entry fee thing, and and now they're right back to paying entry fees. So yeah, there's some things that are not as easy as they seem. Absolutely, um, and that's with anything in life, yeah. right? Or yeah, and it, the same is true for us. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I think maybe people see basses in, in the ivory tower, and there's just this mystery <laughs> yeah. or whatever. It's, but to your point, though, like, like what you just said, Chris. I mean, it applies yeah. to us. It's just not as easy mm-hmm. sometimes as, as people think it might be. And, no. but we, the growth we've seen and the new people coming into our sport, we're heading in the right direction. We're heading in the right direction. Yeah, that's there, awesome. If you work in the industry, if, if you're a professional angler, if yeah. you work at Bass, I mean, there's the future is bright. Yeah. So. Uh, and Chase, when it, I just got to say, like as we're wrapping up here, I just got to say, when you stood up and. During that split, 2018, you were new on the scene. No one knew you. I didn't know you. And, and you said your commitment to the sport and grow and help growing the sport and the commitment to the anglers, you have absolutely stuck to that. And that's, like I said, you're no snake oil salesman. Like, you get after it. So, Well, well thank you so much. Yeah. Y'all, y'all have been very generous with some compliments. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. And I, you know, but we want to do our best. I want to do my best. And, you know, 
ultimately my, my, my faith is what defines me and and uh you know i was literally saved in a miracle from a near-death experience and, and you know, my lord jesus he mm-hmm. he he I met he, he met me and he called me when i was in college and it's given me a perspective on life and the way I approach business. Yeah. And, you know, I really want that to come through. And the application of that in the business world is, is not always easy, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a follower of Christ first yeah. and I'm, I'm a, I'm a, the CEO of, of Bass is, yeah. is down the line. Honestly, I'm a daddy, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a husband, you know, I go home and see my little girls and, but, that's but awesome. my Lord Jesus, he, he saved me. And maybe on another time I could tell you my testimony. Sure. But uh, it really did influence the way I approach business yeah. and relationships and, and wanting things to, to do things the right way and reflect Christ in what I do. Yeah. And again, I, I know I don't always uh, – I'm perfect at that. But I was, Chris Wells, our chaplain, and I yeah. were just hanging out earlier. We were yeah. talking about books or reading and stuff. But it all applies, though, to, to the way I, I try to approach business, Chris, and, yeah. and relationships. And I'm a big person, believer in just relationships, and ultimately business is about relationships yeah. at the end, end of the day. But um, it's been great being on. And, uh, yeah. I I've, appreciate I've enjoyed, it, Chase. Yeah. I've enjoyed our time I, together. I it's, a, it's several months overdue. So, uh, I had a lot more hardball questions, but you're getting out of this one. You know, <laughs> but just so you know, you're going to have to come back. Yeah, yes. we'll go well, around. Yeah, we'll find go, a topic. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go around, too, on the Bilge podcast. We really appreciate it. I know your time is valuable. Uh, before we go... Uh, give the audience uh, just some what's your number one life advice we'll close it out from there number one life advice advice. yeah it could be business could be uh, you name it I would encourage people to look at the scriptures Mm -hmm. and, and 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 put some critical thought into is is that true or not Mm -hmm. I mean you know I, I did. I went through that process, and in the in the process, the Lord called me, again as a believer in Christ, and and as that my number one priority. I, the only answer I could have is to is is to seek the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, many people have been have negative views of God, or been maybe had some bad experience. But what's in the Scriptures is so profound. It's either the most heretical craziest thing ever or it's true Mm -hmm. and i went through the process of really studying years ago and i came i believe it's true and i believe jesus is the son of god and he is the lord i would just that's the number one thing i could say and and at a very deep level and i'm kind of a deep person Mm -hmm. um and as you can tell i probably hadn't been the funniest guy on your on your podcast (laughs) i like to have some fun too you're real well it's just it's just how it's just yeah it's just what I am, and um, but I would just encourage people, and if they've walked away from the faith, if they don't believe in it, that's fine. But at some point, I believe we all have to come to the realization that what is in this book is so profound. It's an injustice to ourselves not, not to put to. some thought into it. Is this real or not? I would encourage people to, and pray in the process, and maybe for you, like the Lord did me going through that. He'll speak to you and call you, and I pray that he will because uh, he changed my life at the age of 22 years old. I grew up in the church. I walked away from it um, like I'm sure others watching this have done. And uh, in, in, in his grace and his mercy, he called me, and I believe it's available for others. But, you know, he asked us to seek and to knock, and I would encourage people to seek and knock. So. Awesome. That is excellent. That's great advice. It really is, and I'm going to look into that. I really am because I haven't been the best of uh, follower, and I need to. I really do. So that's great advice, Chase. And, again, we really appreciate you having you on. And uh, and maybe at the Classic or – well, Classic Week's going to be really he- hectic, but maybe at some time in the fall we, you could have well, – I'll see a yeah, Classic yeah. Week. Yeah. We, may be, we may be running around oh, uh, yeah. with, our, with our hair on fire. But, yeah. Uh, we'll, <laughs> Very we'll cool. See and if you guys haven't booked tickets out to Knoxville, Tennessee, when is it? March? 24th through 26th. 26th. Look at plane tickets, look at accommodations, and uh, it'll be one heck of a show. We will break the records. Thanks to Chase and all of his team. So 
there you have it, Chase Anderson. I really Chris, appreciate your time. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me on. And yep. Trey, thank hey, you. Yep. I appreciate and it. And I hope I hope everyone got a better understanding of, of of Chase Anderson, CEO of BASS. We're out. Thanks, guys. Thank y'all.